It's the 14th anniversary of the Dreamcast, and, well, I'm going to express my personal feelings and opinions about the Dreamcast. Back then, a lot of people were probably happy with their Dreamcast than they probably were with the PS2, and in my opinion, I think that's alright and everything. I had a Dreamcast, and I loved it. I loved it so much back then, I didn't care about anything else, mainly, and this was during my middle school phase and everything. We had a couple of good games on the Dreamcast, and I'm going to name those off later on and everything. I decided to start this video with no intro or anything because, well, I'm not feeling too good right now. I'm kind of dulled out right now, because seeing how it is that it's the Dreamcast's 14th anniversary and everything like that, I can't play my Dreamcast or anything, because I don't have it anymore. My cousin Star of Sin has it, and, well... I got no one to blame except myself and everything, because as of this moment, we don't really have that many games left on the Dreamcast anymore or anything like that. We only have about maybe a few, a handful of them or anything, and that just sucks. But uh, throughout, throughout the Christmas of 99 and everything, we first got the Dreamcast and everything, and it was pretty cool and everything. I enjoyed it, especially when you got to use the little VMUs to play Chow Adventure and stuff like that or play Sonic Adventure and everything. Sonic Adventure was probably the first game I played on the Dreamcast more than anything else. So yeah. <sighs> I can't really think of anything else to say basically. I'm sorry. This is gonna be a pretty dope video and everything. I don't know what else to say. But uh, yeah. I wanna say thank you to Sega for the Dreamcast and everything and of course to the little white box itself, the Dreamcast for all the fun memories, the VMUs, the controller. Because I had fun with it back then when we got it on Christmas, and I had fun with it up until I let my cousin borrow it. Which is sad, unfortunately. But yeah. But uh I'm gonna pretty much name off the games right now that I had for Dreamcast. Uh but basically for the Dreamcast, of course, we had the main system, and of course we had the two control we had two controllers. That's all we really had back then. And of course we had two VMUs. We didn't have any in the Rumble Pack or the other features that came with it. Like for semen where you can use the microphone to talk to the semen and everything. And uh, we didn't have the little Rumble Pack feature which I wish we had back then so I could feel Sonic Adventure and its fullest and everything. And I spent a lot of money on those batteries for the VMU so that way it didn't have to do the sound whenever you started up the Dreamcast and everything. But yeah, Sega Dreamcast still holds a precious place in my heart and everything like that. So many fond memories, whether it's playing Sonic Adventure, playing Marvel vs. Capcom, or Marvel vs. Capcom 2, playing Power Stone with my cousin one time, and uh, some of the other cool features that you could have used and everything, like caring for my chow. Yeah. Anyway, here are some of the Dreamcast games that uh, we used to have back then. Now I'm going to name off the Dreamcast games that we had back then, or borrowed. I'll try to remember some of the ones that we did have back then, or that we borrowed and everything, and I can only show off one actual Dreamcast game disc, so yeah. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> first one off the bat was Sonic Adventure. That was one of the first Dreamcast games that, of course, I got. My brother didn't really care too much about it, so I just said, oh well. But, uh, yeah, Sonic Adventure was one of those games that it was the first 3D Sonic game I actually played, of course, counting Sonic 3D Blast, which was on Sega Genesis, but it was a very interesting experience for me when I first got it. Uh, next up was, of course, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, and, uh, I had fun playing as Sonic Ant and or Shadow back then, and it was very fun. Uh, Space Channel 5, which of course my sister rented one time at, when she stayed out here, which was very fun, and it reminded me a lot of Parappa the Rapper and everything like that, and of course Ooh La La was so well, Ooh La La. <laughs> uh, Space Channel 5 was one of those, one of my favorite games I played on the Dreamcast back then, but uh, uh, sadly we never really owned it, but it was rented. Another game that we had, of course, which was one of my brothers on the Dreamcast, was WW, WWF Royal Rumble. I had a field day with that every once in a while whenever I came over and I spent the night at my grandma and aunt's house whenever I wasn't, when I wasn't staying at my mom's house, basically. It was a fun game and everything like that. I enjoyed Royal Rumble to a certain degree. Another game was one of my personal favorite fighting games on the Dreamcast, Capcom vs. SNK, the first one. 
where Capcom characters and SNK characters fought against each other. True, some of the controls could have been done a little bit better, but I didn't really care too much because it was a fun game and everything. Two of my favorite franchises, Capcom fighters like Street Fighter, Fighter, <coughs> and who else? Uh, Dog Stalkers and whatnot fought against characters from King of Fighters, Fetal, and Fetal Fury and whatnot. It was awesome. Another interesting title that we played was, of course, Shenmue. You guys should know what Shenmue is, but my sister was the one who first had that back then when uh, the Dreamcast came out. We played as Ryo Hozuki. I only played it a few times back then, and I had fun with it, actually, especially with the BMU and everything like that. I think Shenmue had some BMU features on it, but I can't really remember, unfortunately. But yeah, Shenmue. We played it, of course. Wish I had a copy of it. Another game, well, one that we rented one time, which my brother Patrick rented one time and brought over one time when we played on my Dreamcast was uh, Soul Calibur, the first Soul Calibur game. That was the first time I actually got into Soul Calibur series, and right away when I first played it, I was drawn into it. It was awesome. Sorry if I'm not explaining too much about how I really feel about the video games and everything, guys. Uh, this is just going to be a quickie video, basically. Another game that uh, we had on the Dreamcast, which was one of my brothers, was NFL 2K. I played that every once in a while, and I enjoyed playing football on the Dreamcast. It was very fun. Solid football title. Uh, another game we had on the Dreamcast was Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. And, of course, that's the one that has Bill Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton, and, of course, Michael Jackson, and, of course, Rumble Man on it. Part Round 2 was actually very fun. My Uncle Johnny actually loves Round 2. I still curse myself for bringing uh, the PS2 version on vacation with us to Galveston one time. Uh, we had, one time we actually had one of the Streamcast Sega Smash Pack games, which had 12 great games on them and everything. Games like Golden Axe or Golden Axe 2, Virtual Cop, Sonic 1 or 2, Rinja Shinobi, Vector Man, Streets of Rage 2, and all sorts of other great titles, including Shining Force and whatnot. Smash Pack was definitely something that Dreamcast owners want to have because you can play classic, classic uh, Genesis and Sega Saturn games on it and stuff like that. It was awesome. We never really owned it, but my sister had it had it for a good while. Uh, a game that I played on the Dreamcast that was also fun, which got me into this series for the first time because I didn't know about it, was Dead or Alive 2. Now, I didn't know about Dead or Alive or the Tecmo series that much, except the Tecmo was the ones responsible for doing Monster Rancher one time. But uh, when I first played Dead or Alive 2, I'm like, this is pretty simple fire and everything, it's easy. Then later on, when I got for, you know, learned more about the series and everything like that, it became one of my favorite uh, fighting game franchises of all time. Tomonobu Uragaki rocks for making Dead or Alive 2, and I give a big thumbs up, especially because it came out of the Dreamcast. I have the PS2 version of Dead or Alive 2, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. Uh, one game that my sister also had, Cassandra had on the Dreamcast was, of course, Grandia 2. I have the PS2 version of Grandia 2, but I'd rather have the Dreamcast version. Of course, you know how Grandia 2 acts. You play as the Geohan Ryudo as he tries to stop the evil Belmar from being resurrected and everything like that, which is awesome, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. 2000 or higher. Uh, yeah. But Grandia 2, definitely one of my favorite RPGs on the Dreamcast. One of the only ones I've actually played on the Dreamcast. Because I never got a chance to play games like Sky of Ar Skies of Arcadia, because I didn't know about them back then because I guess I moved on to the uh, PS2 and everything. Uh... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, one of the other games that I got uh, for the Dreamcast, which was a birthday gift back then, and was Marvel vs. Capcom, the first one, Clash of the Superheroes. Marvel characters fighting against Capcom characters, which was awesome. And of course, one of my favorite villains of all time from the Marvel vs. Capcom franchise, Onslaught. <laughs> I never did unlock any of the special characters in the game or anything like that, but I had fun playing two-player with my sisters, and of course my brother at, on certain times. Marvel vs. Capcom was definitely one of my favorite games on the Dreamcast. It just blows the, that I never unlocked any of the characters like uh, Orange Venom, or Roll, or uh, Lilith or anything like that. It sucks. But I still had fun with it even though it got hard at times. 
and one of my other games that I got one time when we went out to Target about two years sometime after the Dreamcast came out was the second Marvel vs. Capcom game, and I spent over hours trying to unlock everything in that game, you have no idea. Though there wasn't any story mode or anything like that for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I didn't really mind because I had fun playing it, playing as some new characters like the newer characters like playing as Psylocke, Cyclops, Guile, uh, Sakura, uh, Iron Man for that matter, Baby Bonnie Hood, BB Hood, you know, it was awesome. Capcom 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was definitely one of my uh, second favorite fighting games on the Dreamcast, and it shows, basically. Hell, I, I had a PS2 version, but the disc disappeared, someone I think stole it. Uh, I have it on PSN, or the PlayStation 3, for whenever I feel the need to play it and everything, when I want to play online or get pwned, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we also had NBA 2K on the Dreamcast. I think we still have it. I don't know. I gotta ask Sartsin if we got it, but it's an awesome, solid foot a basketball title. I really wish I could have played more of those sports games on the Dreamcast back then. It's sad, actually. Uh, one time, my cousin had Power Stone. Not my cousin Sartsin, but my cousin Draylon. Uh, he had Power Stone, and I played the Living Crud out of the uh, demo disc version so much it was ridiculous. The only two players you could play as were, of course, Falcon and Gunrock, but I didn't mind too much. I was just like, I want to play the full version, damn it! Then, of course, I got my wish when I uh, went over to my cousin Draylon's house one time, and my phone is going off apparently. But yeah, I played the uh, Dreamcast version, uh, version of uh, Power Stone. One time when uh, my co when I went over to my cousin Draylon's house when he was still living with his uh, uncle at one time and uh, I had a blast with it. This was like Smash Brothers in a way, and it showed that it would be so awesome if the characters in Power Stone could go against the characters of Smash Brothers. That would kick ass. <laughs> Uh, one game that we rented one time that I only got to see uh, for one period, and that was it, was Resident Evil Code Veronica, and uh, that was on the Dreamcast, it was released first on the Dreamcast. I actually enjoyed watching my sister play Code Veronica, because it was, it was an awesome spin-off game of the Resident Evil franchise, and of course we got to see what happened to Wesker, uh, Chris, uh, and Claire, and everything like that, and meet up with the T, the, uh, what was it, uh, uh, the T Veronica virus, basically. I never did see the ending of the game until much later on when I took a look at the PS2 version, which was Code Veronica X. But I didn't really mind too much, basically. It was still creepy and it gave up that awesome Resident Evil uh, feel and everything. <laughs> yeah. And last but certainly not least on the Dreamcast uh, family, the only disc I can actually show you at this moment because I keep it near and dear to me even though it still collects a little bit of dust is this. Sonic Shuffle. Excuse the glare and gleam on it, but yeah, Sonic Shuffle basically ladies and gentlemen. One of my first Christmas Dreamcast games back then. A Mario Party clone, but not too bad in my honest opinion. I can point out almost all the flaws and whatnot of Sonic Shuffle, considering how much I played it and everything. And I'll probably do another video of that sometime soon, basically. Although this game is a bit of a Mario Party clone in some ways, it's an okay game and everything like that. It's not too bad, I just wish some people would stop hating on it. It's not truly one of those dark days of Sonic games and everything. The only things that really keep it down and everything is the cheating computer and, of course, well, the story mode on some occasions. There's an Easter egg for this game, basically. If you set the uh, calendar and clock to about sometime before New Year's or after New Year's, like uh, 1231 or 101, then you can then you get nights as uh, in place of Lumina Flowlight. And if you set it sometime before Halloween or something like that, you get Relia, which I thought was okay and everything like that. Maybe this game should have been uh, connected to Nights in some way with the way how you enter the dream mode and everything and try and save it and everything. And that probably would have made Sonic Shuffle an interesting rare gem in my honest opinion. But oh uh, well. But anyway, yeah. I think that pretty much covers all the Dreamcast games and stuff we played or rented or had back then. <sighs> if only, if only. There were probably more games we could have played, like Choo Choo Rocket and stuff like that, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. After a certain period of time, I stopped playing Dreamcast, only to finish up with Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2, and other games, basically. 
Oh, one thing I neglected to mention is the my original copy of Sonic Adventure got scratched badly a couple of times because we always put the uh, games up there one time. I always stack the games up there <coughs> on top, next to the fireplace, and most of the time some of them would fall off in the case would break or some of the discs would pop out, which is why Sonic Shuffle has these little cracks and stuff on the cases and everything. I've done a good job of taking care of Shuffle oddly. I wish I could say the same for uh, Adventure and Adventure 2. Uh, for some weird reason, Adventure 2's instruction booklet got lost somehow, and I have no earthly idea how in the world that happened. And Adventure 1, it still plays, but it's, scra it's scratched up and it skips too damn much. I'd probably have to ask my cousin if he could burn another copy of it, which he did, of course, but uh, yeah. But yeah. That's basically all the uh, Dreamcast games and stuff that we played or rented or had back then. Now we move on to the finale of this video. For 14 years, Sega Dreamcast has been Sega's last attempt at the manufacturing business. I think it did a pretty good job in everything back then. It's just said that the Dreamcast era ended so quickly and everything. There are still games that were still being developed that only made its way to Japan and everything like that that didn't come to the U.S. There are a bunch of games on the Dreamcast that I missed out on, like Skies of Arcadia, Somebody Amigo, uh, what else? Choo Choo Rocket, and many others. But, eh, I'm happy with what I managed to play on the Dreamcast and everything. I'm just gonna make this an A short and everything. Here's to the Dreamcast for 14 years, and for all the amazing games that came out on it and everything. Happy 14th anniversary, Dreamcast. Wish I had my white Dreamcast so I could give it a big kiss and everything like that. But oh well. Anyway, this is Leo Hightower, and I'm just going to sign up for the time being. Peace out, you guys. <sighs> Forgive me on the ending of this video. I couldn't think of much to say at this point. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Dreamcast, happy birthday to you. Happy 14th anniversary Dreamcast, I still love you after all these years you little white box you.